Amen. I believe God wants to do some more in here this morning before we go home. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just take about 30 seconds, uh, Minister Savon, Pastor Savon, and let's just begin to magnify the Lord. Amen. In praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless us all week. He owes, we owe him all the points. Amen. Hallelujah. We should say when we think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! for blessing me to be here this morning. And one of the things Pastor John reminded us of is sometimes we stand to testify. One of the things that we don't say anymore is, I thank God that I am saved. I just thank God that I am saved. Yes, God has done a lot for me in my life, but the most important thing that he's ever done was save my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. How many glad to be saved this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Grab your Bibles if you would. We're saying good morning to our live stream members and supporters, our first time visitors, uh, those who are joining uh, us for the first time online. We thank God for you because here at Overcomers in Christ uh, Ministries, we are teaching others that faith in God is the victory that overcomes the world. In the Bible, open your Bibles to Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians 2. We're going to read verse 18. It's so good to see you with your Bible. My Lord, I'm just happy. Amen. There's a table of contents. And that was a table that will help you find Ephesians. Are you there? Ephesians 2 and 18, it says, For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. You turn over a page or two, you'll find Ephesians, the third chapter, verse 11 and verse 12. I'm going to read it from the NIV version. It says, According to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. And our last scripture I want to share is coming from the book of Romans the fifth chapter. Amen. It's in your Bible. Romans 5, 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. Just for the next few minutes, I want to speak with you uh, through the help of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Unrestricted access. Yeah. 
Can you say that with me? Unrestricted access. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we're calling on the Holy Ghost, God, to help us this morning. Father, we want to borrow the anointing. God, to bring forth this word that will search our heart, search our minds, and deliver us, O oh God, that will strengthen us, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may have your seats in the presence of our life-changing King. Amen. As believers, uh, I, I want to speak with the believers this morning that we must come to an understanding of the power and the privilege made available to us by virtue of our new position in Christ. Amen. Amen. We're not just saved for no other reason, nothing, and, you know, just to waste time. But there is a purpose. It's a privilege. There, there's power being connected to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. You know, some people brag and boast on the job that they know the boss. They they may even be related to him, but that's nothing to be compared to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's because of Jesus we have unrestricted access. Amen. With God, to God, with unlimited resources and blessings. Well, when we, we break down that word unrestricted, Pastor Pat, we're saying we have the ability to access or use or do something without any limitations, without any rules or restrictions. My God, my God. Because everywhere you go down here, it seems like there's a restriction here. that You can only go so far here and you can only do so much. But when you give your life to Christ, amen, we have unrestricted restricted access to God. Hallelujah. Well, let's break down that word access. Amen. It means a leading to or for toward. When you're leading toward something, bringing into the presence of another person. From the biblical meaning, it means the, uh, the ability to approach the acceptable way to approach God. Amen. We have open access. Amen. There's no other way. I don't care how many people are talking and saying there are many ways to Christ. We know the Bible says there's only one way to God. Amen. And so we, when we put it all together, talking about unrestricted access. Amen. Every believer has the ability Listen, that includes you and me yes. to access yes. Jesus Christ without limitation, Amen. Amen. without restriction. Amen. Amen. The, the good thing is, like, you may go to your job, you're working, and you may not uh, be right there to pray, but somebody else can be praying uh, for you. Mm -hmm. Somebody yeah. can be able to go and intercede for you. You, you. you know, whatever it is, we can reach the throne room 24-7, 365. Is anybody excited about it tonight? Probably t this afternoon. I'm already tonight. Amen. All right, I got to get to my first point. Man had restricted access to God uh, before Christ came. Mm -hmm. And when we search the Old Testament, they had access, yeah, the Old Testament, they had access uh, denied. Amen. 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 Help me, Holy Ghost. I, 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 I know what I want to say. And I, it, ain't coming out, it ain't coming out fast enough. Amen. Listen, in the Old Testament, in Leviticus, and you have to, and some in Exodus, you have to read it for yourself. Amen. The only the priests, this is before mm -hmm. Christ, mm -hmm. who were ceremonially clean, mm -hmm. were able to enter the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. Guess how often? Once a year. Mm -hmm. During that time, that day, it was called the Day of Atonement. 
Amen. Where the priest went in into the holy of holies. Well, that that place was restricted because in the holy of holies, that's where the presence of God dwelled. Anybody just can't enter into God's presence. And, and that even today, when we look at coming to church and we say, praise the Lord and, and hallelujah, it's hard for a sinner man to understand what's going on in the presence of God. Well, Pastor John, the, the main reason that is so hard for the sinner man to understand what's going on is because they may know of him but they don't know him. Ooh. Amen? Yes, amen. That's a good point. Amen. The priests were responsible for the sacrifice. Mm-hmm. You see, blood had to be offered uh, and put on the altar for God to accept the sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Amen? Mm-hmm. And so the priests were the only one to to be able to be the go-between between the people and God. But he had to be make sure he's right. Amen. Because right. when right. the priest wasn't right, there were consequences. Mm-hmm. Amen. And so I'm so glad that when Jesus came on the scene, he did away with the, the middleman. Uh, y'all yeah. up the, Amen. Listen, the children of Israel, when you read it in the Old Testament, they were only allowed to go to the door of the tabernacle. Amen. God is as close to the, the, the presence of God that they could come. And so they were standing on the outside of the tabernacle while the priest came on the inside. And before he got to the Holy of Holies, he had to go through the place of holy, uh, the, the holy a holy place, and then behind the veil, there was the holy of holies. Hallelujah. Amen. And but listen, you know the devil always try to show up, no matter where at, where we are, where yeah. God's people is. Yeah. In Leviticus, you got to read this this week, saints. In the 10th chapter, there were two sons of Aaron. Well, let's see if we can get those names. Nadab and Abihu took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon. Amen. And so, uh, let me keep reading. And And offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not to do. Amen. Don't you know if, if, if we don't understand what it is to get in the presence of God that he can tolerate sin yes. in his presence? So much of the foolishness that we're seeing today in the church, they need to read what happened to these two men. Mm. Hallelujah. What it says, and it says, and a fire went out from the Lord and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. They violated the sanctity of the holy of holies. You can't come in the presence of God any kind of way. And expect God to accept it. We bring in all kinds of the world's foolishness into God's tabernacle, into the holy of holy. And we're saying, Lord, accept this as my offering. And God needs to deal with us according to our sin. Can I tell you what happened in many times when you see God dealing directly with the people when they messed up. See, we got no fear today. That's right. That's right. We think we got away with it one time and we can keep doing it, but there's going to come a payday. Mm. You can't bring the world into the sanctuary That's and right. expect God to receive your offering. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Uh, and to enter into God's holy presence. You must come through the only way he has provided. Last week, we shared that Jesus is the door to the sheep. Mm -hmm. 
And you explained it this morning how the shepherd would lay down his life uh, at night in the in the sheepfold so the enemy couldn't get in. On, yeah. How many say, I want God's protection? Yeah. I want God's power over my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. St. John 14 and 6. I think we all need to know this scripture. It says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Before I, I, we get any further, let me finish explaining why uh, God dealt so harshly. Well, it wasn't even harshly. They got what they deserved with Aaron's two sons. Aaron, we know Aaron's sons, they were all a part of the Levitical priesthood. They were chosen by God. They weren't handpicked by man or, or cousins and now. God picked them to, to be his spokesmen. These priests saw the miracles of God. They weren't brand new Christians. They saw miracles of God. They were part of, of seeing different signs and wonders that many of the, of the uh, old patriarchs didn't see because they had a special anointing on them to do what God had called them to do. But just one mistake, Jesus. if you want to call it a mistake, they decided, well, you know, God's been with us. We got it going on. We got it in the bag. God can't touch us. They get to the temple and decide instead of taking fire from the burn offering which God received, they decide to get fire from uh, another outside source. And they were counting on God to receive their offering. And God says, you have disobeyed me. Not only that, you are unauthorized because I put Moses or Aaron in charge of you. That's like a man or a woman in our congregation decide where they going to go preach and represent overcomers in Christ, and we know nothing about it. Yeah, yeah. Start a whole other ministry, yeah. and people get back and don't. It's another church on the other side called Overcomers. They say we we sent them, and we know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God, back in the day, God dealt directly. Y'all yeah. know Ananias and Sapphira. What did he do with them when they lied to the Holy Ghost? They thought they were lying to the man of God. Well, they they tried. They 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 were clever. They didn't tell the whole truth. How many of you know half truth is nothing but a lie? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't know that they were talking. You you talking about this man's representing Jesus Christ, and you got the audacity to lie in his face. You're going to be dealt with. Because sin that is not dealt with in the church spreads like cancer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But when they fell dead, you read it in the book of Acts. The Bible says fear fell on everybody. It sent a message that don't play with God. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be who you are. Mm -hmm. Be serious. Be true. Be honest. Be Holy Ghost feel. Mm -hmm. So these 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 sons, they they did their own thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and God dealt with them. All right, I got to move. I promise you. Pastor John, one of the things that this reminds me of, because as you said, God has chosen them. Mm -hmm. We all know that there's a difference between being called and being chosen. Yes. But these two priests show us that even though you can be chosen, you can still step outside of the will of God. Yes. And especially those who are chosen, there are consequences, yes. serious consequences. Don't we know pastors today who started off just, I mean, wonderful, just really Christian teaching the unadulterated word of God. But then because of their success sometimes, their heads get big yes. or, or whatever, you know, they get, they get waylaid by the amount of money they're in or whatever. And we'll see these people start off under the anointing. Yes. We'll see them going another way. And then once God has given us a chance to repent, to turn back to him, to get this thing right, and we don't do it, 
that's when the Lord allows you to come to an open shame yes. and God chastises you or, or he, he deals out his judgment against you before the world. Openly, yes. Open rebuke, open judgment. So just because you're chosen, don't think you just got it all wrapped up, all in the bag. Mm, that's so true. Amen. Y'all getting something out of this? Hallelujah. We no longer need another man or woman to go to God on our behalf. Amen. Amen. He's all we need to have access to the Father through Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, I came to tell somebody all restrictions have been removed, destroyed, and done away with. So what's hindering you from having access to God? What are you allowing to come between you and God? Your relationship, amen, because Jesus opened up the way. Amen. Every believer has unrestricted access to the Father through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's keep moving. Jesus Christ's death gave us uh, access into God's presence. Mm-hmm. Amen. Don't you know, uh, because of what Jesus Christ has done, even the prophets of old weren't able to enjoy to, to get in his presence uh, like we do. Amen. They longed for it. Amen. They had a taste of it, but they it wasn't to be so because Jesus had not been glorified. Amen. In Matthew 27, verse 51, 50 and 51 from the New King James Version, Matthew 27. It says, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. Amen. Amen. The veil was separated the holy from the holy. When I researched what made that so significant was the veil was supposed to be almost three three feet wide that divided the holy from the whole the holy of holies. It is impossible for man to make that happen to divide that. But when Jesus gave up the ghost and breathed this, uh, Amen. The veil that separated uh, the the presence of God and the presence of man that came in between, Amen. The veil was torn with twain, as the Bible says, uh, torn in twain, Amen. And so from top to bottom, and so that free. Any burial that was blocking, that was uh, separating God from man, now it was no more. Yes. Woo! Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And at his death, we were given unrestricted access mm-hmm. to the holy of holies. Amen. His death removed all restrictions. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. I wanted to write half the Bible because it was... From the old to the new, it was all described because everything that happened in the old was leading to Jesus Christ. Everything in the temple, from the candlesticks, from the the, the gold, and every everything on the veil, the curtains, the veil was leading to Jesus Christ. And I, I got excited. I said, "Lord, we're gonna be here tonight, service." <laughs> Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and the 11, uh, 11 through 9, 19. I, I, I just want to uh, read part, parts of it. Verse 19 says, Having therefore, brothering, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Amen. In other words, what they're saying the holy of holies has become the throne room of God. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Amen. And we are to come boldly to what? The throne room. Yes. This is where the manifest presence and glory of the Lord is. You don't have to be in church to get in the throne room. Come on. 
Ah, hallelujah. I, you know, have you ever been at, at work and you just had a moment to steal away? That quiet place can become a throne room. Amen. Hallelujah. Because amen. when God is on the inside, amen, and you're crying out to him and you make connection, God will meet you right there. Yes. In the midst of, of when sinners are all around, you can still have a praying spirit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, come boldly. There's no, you know how the unscared the approach God because I've done so. Uh, he died because we've done so much wrong. Oh, yeah. But what happens, the enemy will try to trick the people. You messed up so bad. There's no way God is going to forgive you. There's no, the, all the church people are going to look at you. Well, we're going to be looking till Jesus comes because we all got a pass. Come on, yes, yes. We, we all have something that we don't want on national television. Come on, yes. I, yes. I, I, I must be talking Woo. to them. <laughs> we, got, we got stuff going, have, have stuff in our life that we don't, we don't care to the grave. It's between yes. me and yes. my Lord. Amen. Yes. Yes. And I'm so glad that God loves us enough that He does not expose our yes. mess. Yes, yes. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. A couple of people are happy about it. I'm, I'm, I'm so yes. glad that He don't expose my flaws and my failures. That He gives us time to repent and and yes. keep coming back because some things really do try to trip us up. Yes, yes. Yes, but that's why we have to stay prayed up. Mm. Because, listen, the devil don't know everything. Mm. But he presents it. And so he, he goes off our, our action, our response to what he presents. Yeah. The temptation. Y'all know what temptation is. Mm -hmm. He says, well, let's see what they're going to do when I present this pretty girl on the job. And mm. Can I help you, boss? Come on. And, 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 <laughs> and see that smile and that, that yeah, come on. And see the devil is going. He's taking that. So, oh yeah, we're going. We're going to work our way in there. But when you when you just say no, no, thank you, I'm fine. And keep a hallelujah. <laughs> All right, maybe that's just me. Hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. And so listen. In spite of what God had charged the priests, mm -hmm. they were doing what God had called them to do. But still, people had a sin problem. Mm -hmm. When you read yeah. Hebrews, the ninth yeah. chapter, yeah. God even got tired of the blood of goats and mm -hmm. bulls and, and turtle, and people still had a sin. And he mm -hmm. says, I need a perfect mm -hmm. sacrifice. See, in order to have, to get a perfect sacrifice, the sacrifice had to be sinless, yes, yes, sir. without blemish, and you could search the whole world over, couldn't find nobody. Thank God. Mm. Hebrews, you. you got to read Hebrews. Amen. For yourself, the tenth chapter. I don't have time. Amen. In spite, in spite, but Jesus. Amen. He became our great high priest. Mm -hmm. and, and see, that done away with all the priests, you know, because he was the one. And so now we come to him. Mm -hmm. He's the one that provides what we need. He's the one that uh, saves us and cleans our life. Can anybody testify mm -hmm. I've been cleaned? I've been changed. I've been transformed since Jesus came in through my eyes. And, and Pastor John, right there is a good place for me to step in. To, uh, you guys know my testimony because what I was once so ashamed of, now I walk in freedom. When God called us to start the ministry and my first opportunity to actually preach somewhere, I, I was afraid to do it. I was very hesitant because... Uh, in, in this day of, of social media, you know, everything's on camera, I was afraid that because of all the dirt I've done, that somebody from my past uh, uh, might step up and say, she cannot be a true woman of God. I know her. I've been with her. Y'all remember that movie? Um, what was it? 
um, it was uh, the, the man's name was Duck. Rob Townsend was playing a guy by the name of Duck. Five Heart Beast. And he was getting ready to marry this girl. And the brother told some, he told the woman, you can't marry him. I know you. I've been with you. But listen, before I got up to speak, and I, I had been studying stuff and not, nothing seemed to come together. And right before I got ready to speak, God told me, just tell your story. You know, you ain't got to get into the nitty gritty, you know, nothing like that. But tell your story. So what God did for me, God had me expose my own dirt. So that nobody from my past, you can come and say whatever you want to. That old Pat did that. Yes, yes. Not this new creature in Christ. Not the one that went before the Holy of Holies. Come on. The one that gave it all to God. The one that went before the throne of grace. And was made clean. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When we read in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verses 14 and 15, it says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is cast into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. It's in your Bibles. Let us hold fast our profession. Verse 15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted at like as we are, yet without sin. My God, the perfect sacrifice. Amen. It satisfies God's judgment on mankind because without Christ we were hopeless. Because when you think about the children of Israel, they were the pure breed. Amen. They were the chosen of God. Every uh, un-Jew, uh, yeah, non-Jew, we are called Gentiles. And we were without hope. Amen. We're going to get there. Hallelujah. But Jesus gave his life. It wasn't just for one race, but it was for every race. Amen. Nationality. It didn't matter where you live, who your family was. Everybody can have unrestricted access to God. Well, let's see. In Hebrews, the second chapter, 11 and through 18, I don't have time, but I wanted you to read this. We were called Gentiles, and the Bible says we weren't part of the commonwealth of Israel, aliens, and, and uh, that's what the Bible calls us. Amen. Strangers from the covenant of promise, having, watch this, no hope. Amen. And without God in the world. Hallelujah. But Jesus came to change that. Hallelujah. Amen. We did not have a hope in this world. Hallelujah. Amen. But now Jesus Christ, the Bible says, ye were, sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of of Jesus Christ. Amen. The perfect sacrifice. He paid our debt with his blood. When we skip to verse 18, it says, For through him, which is Jesus Christ, we both, Gentiles and Jews, have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Hallelujah. We have, uh, we've been given the privilege, amen, to partake of what Jesus uh, died for. There's no restriction, amen. Verse 19 is what I wanted to get to, Ephesians 2 and 19. Now, therefore, watch this, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. Watch this, but you are now fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Every Gentile has unrestricted access to God. 
Well, my last point, and I got to get out of here, is come boldly to the throne of grace. As you heard Pastor Pat describe it in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 16. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. He's talking to the Jew and the Gentile that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Amen. See, we must take spiritual responsibilities for our own soul. Amen. Mama can't get saved for you. Daddy cannot step in your place. You and I got the answer for ourselves. Are you listening? We are responsible for bringing all of our sins to Jesus. Bringing all of our hang-ups, all of our issues, our problems, guilt and shame. We got to bring it to Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything that we're going through, Jesus says, come unto me. Bring it to me. I will handle it. Amen. I will bear it. Hallelujah. That means we have unrestricted access to Christ. But we've got to come to him with confidence. Come to him boldly. I'm bringing my issues because how many experience issues in life? Got some hang-ups. Got some issues that you're dealing with. Jesus says, just feel free to come. That's the privilege of a loving, caring, sharing Heavenly Father. That he says, I've opened up my house. I've opened up my heart for you. Amen. And I love you. I don't, I know you're going through, but I'm going to give you the grace. I'm going to give you what you need to make it through. Amen. And the Bible says that he paid the ransom for our sins to remove the sin debt from our lives. And the question you would ask, well, why are people still rejecting him? If salvation is free, amen, and Jesus paid the price, why do people still reject him? First of all, the the God, small g of this world, has blinded their mind that they should not obey the truth. Then there you got people who don't understand that their eternity is connected to their relationship with God, whether you spend it with him or uh, in the lake of fire. And they will say, well, why do it? Because we can see it in one of the churches in Revelation. We got we got possessions. We, we have a job. We got education. We got money. What do I need Christ for? But can I tell you, none of those things are going to heaven with you. They can't get you into heaven. You're going to need a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so people come up with all kinds of excuses why they don't want Christ. But there's going to come a day, the Bible says, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord, can you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. As spiritual priests, we must obey what God told us to do in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Go and preach the gospel. Tell somebody, because if we don't tell them, how will they know? Hallelujah. Unrestricted access. Don't let anything block you. Hallelujah. You know, people say, well, I, I'm so bad. I, I'm strung out on this. I got, I'm hiding this. People uh, are, are staying away because they think they have to clean themselves up. You, you don't have the power. Let Jesus do it. People are like, when I stop doing this, then I'll come to church. Year go by and another year. Years, people, they can't stop. Because once Satan Satan sees your agenda, he'll he'll do whatever it takes to make sure you don't make it and call on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad Jesus tore down the barriers. Hallelujah. 
there's still hope. As long as there's breath in our body, there's still hope. Hallelujah. Heads bowed, eyes closed. What is, what is it in your life that's blocking your relationship with God, that's hindering? you try to stop on your own and you can't do it. It keeps showing up, even when you think you have mastered it on your own. Jesus says, I died for your hang-up. I died for your I can't help it. And he's still crying out today, I want to help you. I'm here to help you, but you got to take responsibility and say, Lord, I surrender all. I'm tired of fighting this thing in my flesh.